Welcome everybody, my name is Chris from Pantheon Music Academy. Today I'm going to be going over a very common question I get. How do I start to DJ? What do I need? Do I have to buy anything? Is there any software? What are the steps? Good news is that I will be covering through the very necessary steps that it'll take in order for you to be ready to start playing on industry standard equipment. What I mean by industry standard is that at the end of the day, clubs, venues, and festivals will have you playing on what are called XDJs or CDJ equipment. Knowing how to interface with this equipment, with this hardware, is necessary towards your craft. Uh, there's no way around it, guys. So if you're at home and you're using a controller, uh, those controllers are very useful for getting the basics down, but ultimately they are just training wheels. Uh, you will have to go without them and you will need to eventually uh, get to the point in where you can consistently and confidently play on this type of equipment. Um, without further ado, we're going to go ahead and first start with the software that you'll need in order to place your music onto your USB. That is called Recordbox. You can find it at recordbox.com. You can download it for free. Once you've downloaded and installed, then we can go ahead and open up the software and I'll show you how to go about by actually managing music onto it. So now that we have Recordbox up, I'm going to go ahead and show you how to go about by loading music. In my case, I already have some tracks in here. I expect you to pretty much have an empty library. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and go into wherever you have your music on your Windows or Mac computer. You're going to highlight the tracks that you want to move over. It's as simple as clicking, dragging, and dropping. Once the tracks have been imported, there's a small progress bar that will go through. And once it does complete, you'll have a graph or a preview of the track itself. Uh, I'm going to give you a quick tour of how this works. And so what we're looking at is your uh, at the very top, you have what are called the players. Uh, you can switch between views from one player to two players uh, to maybe just a simple player or even a full browser. Um, I'll show you how I preferably like having two players and I'll show you why that's useful later on. Um, but for right now, um, let's go ahead and go into the bottom section. The bottom section is collection. Collection is where you have all your tracks and you'll separately have what are called playlists on the left hand side. Now with playlists, playlists are also crates. Uh, other software, I, I think it's Serato in particular, might refer to playlists as crates. It's the same thing. It's a place in where you can organize or place music for a very specific purpose. In this case, I have a test playlist that I have set aside just for this video. Um, and ultimately, in order to move music onto your USB, you do need to place it first in a playlist. More on that in a moment. Recordbox has a very useful feature in where if you right click on the tracks that you want to have analyzed, you can then select the option that says analyze keys. Doing so will uh, place the tracks in musical standard notation. Uh, if you're already familiar with uh, music theory, then that might be enough and you might be able to move on to the next step. If not, I may very well create a separate video on how to go about by converting these keys into what's called the Camelot wheel. The Camelot wheel is another method that you can use uh, in order to n allow you to play music in key without needing to know music theory. Uh, you also have different fields that you can customize or make adjustments to. Uh, as you see, if you right click on the column over here on top, you have the ability of making changes or determining what labels or what categories you can organize your music through. Uh, very, very useful. Um, you can set this to your heart's content. Whatever works for you, works for you. Uh, these are the current ones that I particularly like. I would recommend specifically making sure that you have BPM, key, track title, uh, artwork and preview, maybe not essentials, but some folks like it, and then genre. Genre I like a whole bunch uh, because I do like to organize my music uh, specifically by genres, and it makes it a lot easier for me to find the music the type of music that I want to play when I need it. So now that we have our tracks organized by key, the next step I want to show you is how to go about by loading this track onto the player for the purpose of setting up your cues and making sure your grid is proper. EDM music follows a 4x4 pattern. And if you understand this 4x4 pattern, it's very easy to be able to DJ in a way that follows the music structure, which would make sense to the ear. What I mean by that is I'm going to go ahead and play this track and I'm going to show you right over here where it says 1.1 1, 1 bars. 
I'm going to show you how music changes over time. We're very briefly going into music theory, just so that way you know how to set up your grid. Okay, so here we have a track that we want to make sure the grid is set up properly for. And what I mean by, by, by the grid is that you have these red lines here. These lines indicate, you'll, you'll notice that these lines only occur after every fourth measure. So that's one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two. You get it, right? Change occurs at the end of the fourth bar of the fourth measure. One, two, three, four, two, two, three, four, three, two, three, four, four, two, three, four, change. I'm going to play this track and in four bars, you're going to see some type of change. Right there, right? So because change happens at the end of every fourth measure or at the end of every four bars, it is incredibly important that you pay attention to this structure and actually make your transitions according to this pattern. We're not going to go into music theory or DJ theory just yet, but it is important that you do understand that as a basic concept for the purpose of you setting up your grid properly and understanding why this is essential. What I mean by setting up your grid properly, by the way, is that on your CDJs or XDJ equipment, you're going to have an indicator that allows you to determine when the kicks are being played or when they're hitting. And you'll have a visual representation of that on the graph themselves. Uh, this is on the equipment. Uh, Record Box has a very similar format. So what you see here is pretty much the same thing of what you're going to see on the decks. Um, the one thing that you always want to do is you want to make sure that your this little red line that you see over here, the very beginning of every measure should always be kissing the drum kick. And so I'm going to go ahead and click this icon over here to set the first beat of the bar to the current position. As you can see, I can zoom in and out by using my scroll wheel. And I have this little red icon uh, just barely kissing the top of that kick. Um, let's make it a little bit more like that. There you go. So it's just kissing it, just barely, barely even touching it. Doing so, we'll make sure that the rest of this track is properly aligned. So long as my BPM is correct, then uh, the rest of this track will be properly aligned. And what's true over here for this kick pattern is also true over here, even towards the end of the track, right? Um, here is a fun factor, though. Uh, you'll notice that over here, even later on, this may not even see so right over here it's not it's no longer kick it's no longer kissing the top of that drum pattern um, sometimes the dpm isn't exactly 126 in this case it might actually be 125.99 and making a small adjustment like that can very well resolve this type of uh, hiccup that we're seeing at the very end a lot of edits or a lot of tracks that have been touched by not so professional producers uh, fall victim to this and so as a heads up if you do see a track that uh, that you set up the grid properly to in the very beginning, but later on during the track, you notice that the grid no longer follows the pattern. It just means that the BPM that it's currently at may not be exact. And that's okay. That's why we have our ears and we're not going to be 100% reliant on the visual graph to measure our kicks or to measure our, um, our transitions. Ultimately, your ears are your best friend and that is why you can determine who is an actual capable DJ versus someone that is just simply using the sync button or it's just depending on the visual elements. Um, but enough of that. Moving forward, let's go ahead and go to the next step and where we're gonna go ahead and have you uh, play with the different buttons that are here. So you have the ability of being able to shrink the beat intervals or expand them. You have the ability of being able to move the beat grid to the left or right. You can double the BPM or half it. That's normally more popular between like 70 BPM and 140. Um, and then you also have the ability of being able to make adjustments uh, from the current position. Um, pretty much very self-explanatory by just hovering your mouse over it. It does give you uh, the ability of making changes. Um, and then once you have secured your track and in the sense that you made all the changes that you want to it and you don't want the grid to accidentally move, you can lock it in place to make sure you don't accidentally make changes to it. Um, you have a separate function on the left-hand side. 
the queue and grid option. This allows you to create queues, hot queues, or I should say queues overall are shortcuts. They're like bookmarks. In the same way that a bookmark for a book allows you to revert to a very specific point in that book, hot queues and queues allow you to go back to a very specific point in that track. You'll normally have access to up to three queues on most decks. Some decks have a little bit more, but I've consistently seen three on, it, on CDJs. Because of that, I like only setting up my first three queues. Uh, I'll set one in the middle. I'll set one uh, during a bridge, uh, let's say right here. And then the last one I'll do toward, towards the second bridge or sometimes during a buildup. Um, and so as expected by clicking on these, it'll move the track to wherever you designated that hot queue in the first place. Very, very straightforward, um, pretty, pretty cut and dry there. You do have the ability of being able to do some um, loop functions that's uh, to kind of emulate what you would be doing on the decks. I'm not really gonna cover that. That will be for a little bit more of an advanced section or an advanced video later on. Uh, but that is the rough idea of what you wanna do with every track. You wanna make sure that all your tracks are properly aligned with the grid. Here we have another track in where the grid isn't, isn't exactly perfect. So we'll go ahead and make some clean adjustments. And so by doing so, we can make sure that when I'm loading these tracks and I'm playing them out, that ultimately my grid does make sense. And when I am playing other tracks next to this, that uh, the equipment and the, the, on a visual level, it is as clean and as consistent as possible. Once you've completed these steps and you've organized the music to the best of your ability, once again, I can't recommend that you stay as organized as possible. Uh, either by artist or by track title or by genre, however format you want to use. The point is, is that you make it as easy as possible for you to find the music when you need it. Once you've gotten to the point and where you're ready and you're saying, hey, I have all my music organized and I'm ready to put it onto a playlist. You go over here on the left hand side, right click, create new playlist, label it test or in my case, I'm labeling a test. You can name it whatever you'd like. And then you just simply drag and drop that music onto that playlist easy right once the music is on the playlist we are then ready to move that playlist onto our flash drive so I'm gonna go ahead and connect my flash drive right now and you're gonna notice that we're gonna see a small little indicator on Rekordbox letting us know that our device has been connected uh, it should appear in the devices section so we'll give it a couple moments okay now this particular USB that I plugged in was synced with another computer because of that we're getting this prompt um, that's okay though we have Pete's drive with us on file and what we're gonna do is now that we're ready to move this music onto this flash drive we'll click over here where it says sync manager now in sync manager you want to make sure two things the first thing you want to look for is you want to make sure that you have the right USB enabled here that you have the right one selected once you have the right one selected, you want to make sure that this line or this little checkbox is enabled. It tells the device, hey, it's okay to sync music or sync playlists to this device. And then you'll just select which playlist you want to move over. Once you've confirmed your selection, you'll press close and you'll see a loading bar at the bottom. This is Rich's USB drive, so I don't want to make any changes to his USB drive at the current moment. Um, so because of that, I'm just going to go ahead and uncheck these and press close. Once the music has been moved over to your flash drive, the next and last step is to simply eject it. You can eject it from over here in record box. I personally have a little hiccup in where sometimes it won't let me eject it, even though there's no activity taking place. So I can just go into windows and eject it this way. Once it has been ejected, all the changes that I have made to this flash drive, or I should say specifically to my music for the purpose of playing it out on this equipment, Everything that you see here will be visible on the CDJs or XDJs respectively. Thanks for joining us. Once again, my name is Chris from Pantheon Music Academy. If you guys like this video or if you have some best practices you want to share with us, leave some comments below. If you have some ideas for us on videos you'd like to see in the future, maybe you want me to cover mixed in key, feel free to give us a comment. Let us know below and I'm happy to put out some content for you guys and make it just easier for you guys to get familiar with what it takes in order to be a part of this music industry. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and check out our website at PantheonMusicAcademy.com.